Hello and welcome to this video. So for today's lesson, we will learn about how to create a mobile application that can retrieve a JSON data from remote web application and then to display that JSON data into Google Map. So for today's lesson, we also will need two parts. First, the client, that is the mobile application that will act as a client to retrieve the data from the remote server. And then the server part, which is the part where the server would provide the mobile application with the location data. And then this data will be in turn to be displayed on the mobile, uh, mobile application map. So let's look at the sample code. So please download the sample code from uh, this location. This sample code will also be provided at the link from the YouTube video below. So there will be two codes. First, mymap.zip and then matlumat.zip. So matlumat.zip is a server side. And then my map is the client side. So let's look at the server side first. So the server side will contain these uh, files. So we have all, we have uh, DB, and then we have the SQL file. So the content of this file has been written by myself. And then you will look at the content. So this is the content. So the content will act as an API. So it will uh, read the database and then it will select all the data from the maklumat table. And then it will add uh, each of the row into the array. It will push it. And then it will convert all the array if, uh, as a JSON. So uh, you can view the database over here. So this is the database. When you browse it, the database only contain the ID, the name, the description, and the latitude and longitude. So what we are going to create is an application that can display interesting places in Malaysia. So we have uh, this place, Tasik Banding. And then Museum Archaeology Lenggong. And then we can also have Lada Anggo Saloma. And then Sungai Klah Hot Spring. And then uh, down here we can also have UK Farm Agro Resort and so on. So uh, all the data in uh, green marker are downloaded from the web. Okay, like this. Okay, it's downloaded from the web. But the red marker is pre-programmed inside the application. It's just as like what we have learned on the previous video. So uh, you need to import this uh, database inside your own MySQL. So you need to have uh, at the very minimum exam control panel and then upload it inside your PHP MyAdmin or import it inside your PHP my admin okay from this SQL and then copy uh, to this file okay the first file is DB just to define the database connection and the second file is for API so the API is very simple just like what I have already explained it only used to select all the data from this table right it select all the data from this table and then it would uh, sort the data, add the data one by one inside the array, push it inside the array. Okay, we declare an empty array. And then it, it will convert it into JSON and then it echo the JSON. So to test the raw uh, data, you can uh, go to your own uh, web server and type uh, 0 0.0.1 .0 and type maklumat. So because I've already included inside uh, the maklumat uh, 
URL or maklumat folder and then you press so you will be displayed with this uh, JSON right JSON file so this is the JSON file outlining the uh, all the data inside the database so what we need is to convert this data into map marker okay, into map marker inside your mobile applications so basically this lesson would combine two previous lesson that you have already learned that is to download or to retrieve the JSON uh, file from the internet and then display it on your mobile application and secondly is to create a mobile application that can display map so uh, what we can do here is to display a, a map which can uh, show the marker based on the data that is displayed from the internet or from the remote database so you can change uh, whatever the data is uh, contained inside the database and then uh, your application can download this data and then display it inside your mobile application secondly you need to download this my map and then download it inside your hard disk and you should be able to extract it and then you should be able to open uh, the data code from your mobile uh, android studio click here and then you find the folder over here so find the folder from your own uh, at this and then click ok and then you will be presented with the starter code so this is uh, simple but uh, to ensure that this uh, android project can be built successfully you have to clean uh, the project first to remove it from previous um, building that might uh, included uh, inside the previous project Okay, next, uh, what you need to do is to look at the Google API. So, for this project, you need to enter your own Google API. The Google API has not been provided. So, you need to enter your own Google API to ensure that the project can be executed successfully. And then your map can be, ex uh, can be used. So, what happens if you do not enter your Google API? So, what happens is that when you run your application, you will notice that your application won't be able to display Google Map. Okay, it will only display a blank. So, you will notice that your application won't be able to run a Google Map like this. So you need to enter your Google API. So this is what uh, I'm going to do. I'm going to enter my Google API. And then we run back the application. So you will notice that the application can be executed successfully. But without the marker from the server right next you should uh, test your server your xam server from uh, the emulator so open up the google chrome and then type the server's address so your server address isn't 127.0.1 or localhost or local host right or local host okay don't don't enter like this so you have to find your server's uh, url from your adapter setting so you have to open up the adapter setting like this and then go to the change adapter option and go to the main network or any sort of your network if you are using wi-fi and then press details and then find your IP address over here so for me it is 192.168.0.128 so you have to access uh, the 
your local web server using uh, that uh, IP address. So HTTP slash slash 192.168.0.128. And then you will be presented with them. So, and then you know that your uh, web server is working. So, uh, to display the JSON, you only have to type your um, folders, uh, JSON folder that I've already provided with you and then put here all.php so you will get your json file so this file that we will are uh, going to use uh, in our project so next uh, you only need to go to the android manifest okay go under application over here and type in android users clear traffic put here true Okay, this is to uh, ensure that your Android application can communicate with uh, clear traffic. Okay, right. Next, uh, to continue with, um, with our lesson of um, just like previous lesson, we need to include the JSON and also the Volley library. Okay, next, to continue with our previous lesson, we need to include the JSON and Volley library. So, to include that, we need to go to the Volley uh, and JSON uh, page. Okay, right? And then copy paste this. Copy. And then paste this inside your Gradle script. So, your application Gradle script. Right over here, and add the line implementation volley, and then continue with JSON. So JSON is over here, and then add also this dependency, copy, and then paste it under here. Save and then press sync. Okay, after the sing sing uh, sing uh, have already finished. Okay, after the sing have already finished. You have to go to uh, this website back. Okay, type in uh, your IP address and then go to the. Uh, Go to the uh, website and then to get your sample JSON file. So this is a JSON uh, sample JSON file. So just copy. Okay, copy all the file. Okay, information. And then go to this JSON schema web. Okay, JSON schema to Pojo web. Okay, this is also we have already learned it in the previous video. And then paste it in this uh, text box. Okay. Select all and then paste it inside this text box. So for the package name, please follow the package name of your application. So let's look at the package name of your application or the sample application that I've already provided. So this is here. So go to over here, okay, and then class name, you type here maklumat, you can type here maklumat. Okay, you can include getter and setter, but you can also uh, do not use getter and setter, and then select JSON file format, and then annotation style, you select JSON. Okay, use double number 
and then you can uh, click here preview so you can get a new class net hafiz my map malumat.java so copy this and then we have to create a new class based on uh, maklumat class So to create a new class, you have uh, to right click here over your package name, right click, select new, select Java class. If you feel that this is too fast, you can slow down your video play speed uh, in the YouTube. So there are settings in your video, uh, YouTube video that can slow down the video play speed. Then select class over here. Dia maklumat, and then you select all, and then you paste back. So, there are some uh, of them that is red. You can uh, delete this generated. Okay, you can get the uh, information over here. Okay, next, what left is that you have to go to the map activity. And then you can begin typing your uh, URL. You can type your private uh, string URL. And then the URL of your uh, application. So for me, I have to type my IP address. 128.maklumat.all.php but uh, let me warn you, if you are using uh, or if you are planning to deploy your mobile application to a real device, you have to upload the maklumat file or all .php file to a public web server. So you, either you have to use DigitalOcean or you can also use free web uh, server provider such as 000 web host and then you have to use uh, 00 web host uh, URL over here so you cannot use this uh, URL if you are using or if you are deploying uh, your final year project because uh, this IP address or URL can um, change over time so this is just a warning or just a reminder to you so you have to use a domain uh, over here so hopefully you understand so i suggest if you are uh, developing it for the public or if you are using uh, it as your final year project you should upload this on the public web server such as 000 web host so hopefully you get uh, what I meant so next you have to go to uh, type uh, request queue and then you type here request queue and then you declare a JSON and then you have to declare a maklumat okay maklumat object okay as an array So maklumat is here. So this is just a class. This is an array of object. So what next to do is you have to build uh, your JSON over here. You have to build your JSON over here. Tap a JSON. New JSON. Builder dot create. Okay, then you have to create a send request method. The creating a send request method is just simple. Go to the bottom. It just at the end of the class. You type your public void send request. So you type request queue equals volley dot new request queue 
get application contacts, comma, sorry, no comma, and then just like that. And then create a string request. This string request equals new string request. Yeah, request method to be request method get. Yeah. Okay, so uh, this is just an a HTTP method because we are creating a RESTful web service. RESTful web service have get, post, delete, hit, uh, put, and so on. So uh, we are going to use a basic uh, HTTP method, which is get. So you have already learned in your web application class about get and post. So we will use get uh, in this exercise. And then you put here URL. And then you put here on success. And on error. Okay, on success and on error is a callback a method if the call is successful or on error will be called when the, uh, the request would hit an error or there is a problem on the network. The next, uh, we should add uh, the request to the queue. Okay, just like this. So afterwards, uh, we need to create um, on success. So to create on success, you need to create a new method uh, below here, public uh, respond dot listener. So it will respond with a string. So the name would be on success. So equal to new response dot listener. And then you will get uh, something like this. So if yeah, it doesn't uh, auto generate the on response over here, you only have to press alternate enter and then it will auto generate uh, the method on response. So if there is a red squiggy underline over here, you only have to put semicolon. Okay, on respond will be called after the request to the URL would be successful. So if it's successful, then uh, it will return the JSON file. So when it return the JSON file, you need to pass the JSON file using JSON in order to structure it inside a POJO or plain old Java object. So to do that, you need to use JSON. So you have to use a maklumat over here. Okay, maklumat s JSON dot from JSON. Okay, the reader would be response over here. And then the class would be maklumat. Okay, maklumat uh, class. So we put here the bracket to denote that this will be uh, an array. So this is also an array. So if you look back at the top, so this is an array. So an array of maklumat class. And then the URL is here. Okay, once you have already passed the maklumat, okay, you have to lock it inside your uh, device to show that you uh, have already successfully uh, retrieved maklumat. So you can get here maklumat. Okay, lock D. Just lock it. Alright. So you can put here... Uh, number of maklumat data point 
Replace here. Maklumat dot length. So it will uh, show this in the logcat. So this will be displayed on the logcat. So next, what you need to do is to add the marker. So to add a marker to the map, you need to use for, okay, for maklumat, okay, okay, map, okay, ataupun uh, you can put here info. So maklumat from maklumat. So you can look at this. So this is a Java style, uh, oh sorry, a Python style uh, loop. So, uh, okay, this is red because I haven't put here this. Okay. okay, there's a little bit a hiccup uh, with the braces. So this is already soft. Okay, here we iterate uh, each of the item inside maklumat. So what we have here is info. So inside the info, you can get uh, the description, ID, latitude, longitude, and name. So this is all uh, very similar to the one in here, in the database. You have ID, name, description, latitude, and longitude. Right, this is uh, similar to here. Okay, ID, FID, description, latitude, longitude, name. So what we want to do is to add it to the marker. So when you want to add to the marker, you have to go to the marker. Okay, marker area. Okay, this is how you add the marker. You add the marker with latitude, longitude, title, and its snippet. So what you need to do is copy one of these and inside the loop and then paste it inside the loop. So that we can loop each and every uh, of the information. So you delete here marker option at so what you have here is just this new marker option. Okay, you position it like this. So you can have here as marker options. Okay. Okay, marker option. Okay, marker. Go to marker option like this. Okay. Can you get it? So what we have here is just info. Okay, info latitude. And then you have to declare double because this is double. Okay, double dot pass double. You pass here latitude. And then you have here double longitude. You type here double dot pass double. Info dot longitude. And then you can put your string title. Okay, info dot. Okay, what you want to put here as title? Okay, could be name, could be description. Okay, doesn't matter. But uh, if you refer here, the name could be the title, and the description could be here Joho. So you could have uh, put it as name, and then string snippet. So you can change this in your wood. The latitude would be okay. Latitude should be lat, and then longitude would be LNG. Okay, like this. 
the title cawangan arau you can change it to title and then uh, status here you can change it to snippet okay so we have a uh, marker and then you go up there to the marker option and then you realize that uh, in google map when you are adding the marker you have to put your mf mmap dot add marker mark okay like this so you only have to put your mmap dot add marker and then you put your marker okay so this will continue to loop until there are no more marker okay next uh, you have to create an error like this so go to the end of the class but uh, you have to type you have to type public response dot error listener on error so equals new response dot error listener and then there is a right underline you only have to press ultimate enter implement the method error response so uh, for the error you only have to create a toast dot make text get application context comma okay, the string would be error dot get message comma toast the length of time uh, short or long and then uh, put your show okay, this will handle the error Okay, and then uh, you should also handle for empty empty maklumat what happened if there is a problem with the internet so you can handle uh, empty maklumat by typing this so if maklumat dot length less than uh, one which is uh, zero so you have to put here a toast over here make text get application context Okay, no. Okay, problem receiving listen data. Okay, and then put your toast dot long dot show. And then don't forget to type here return. Okay, to just return the uh, method. Okay, next what left to do is to call for send request. Okay, call for send request. Okay, you can uh, call for send request on this on map ready. Like this. Okay, call it send request. And then that's all. So you can run the application over here. Okay, hopefully this will work. Okay, press here open uh, open map and then okay. All the marker will be added uh, to your application. So these markers are from the internet. Okay, live from your own server from the internet. Right. But you notice that this marker would be red. Okay, all red. Okay, it is uh, cannot be distinguished from your uh, default work marker. So what you need to do is to change the color of the marker to other color. So to change the color of the marker, we can uh, add over here. Okay, you can delete the semicolon and then add your icon. Okay, and then you type your bitmap descriptor factory. And then uh, put here default marker. And then over here you can uh, change the color bitmap uh, descriptor factory dot color. Okay, you can change the color into hue green, azure, blue, magenta, orange, red, rose, violet, yellow. You can change here to yellow just to see the differences, right? And then save. 
and run. And you reopen back the map. Okay, so you see that the marker is changed to yellow. So you can change to other color that you wanted. So this will differentiate from the default uh, marker that you've included inside your application. So the yellow one are from the internet. And then you can also add a new marker on the, the internet, right? Uh, on the database. So to add new marker is simple. What you need to do is to go back to the database over here and then insert, just insert a new row. Okay, you can just insert a new row. So press here and then press insert. For example, is you can uh, put here a museum or istana. Okay, istana. Degree per list, you can put here the location is per list, and then you can put here the latitude of uh, per list. Okay, going to nine. Okay, you can put here like this. So you can press go, and then you go back over here, and then re you reopen the map. So, and then the new, right, the new marker would be, would appear here. It's done in the list. So, both of these, all of these data only pertaining Joho and Perak, but you can add new, new marker, just as easy as you update it on your uh, my SQL database. So when uh, will this code be useful? So this code will be useful if you are creating an application for your own user where you can control uh, the data on the server. So when the user are opening their application, mobile application, the application will retrieve the data that you have already inputted in your own web application or on your own server and then it will display it on the, the user's application. So by doing that, you can ensure that your user will get the latest information from you and then you can update all the latest information on the map from your own database okay my in this case uh, my sql database so it is very easy for the user to get the latest database and then you can delete any point or update any point uh, from your application uh, to the okay to the database over here okay to the uh, from the database to the user over here so uh, the only drawback is that if there is no internet so if there is no internet, then your user won't be able to get the um, the data. So for example, over here, if I try to right to disrupt the data, okay, like this, okay, I try to deny and disrupt the data, right, and then. I put here none signal so that uh, uh, so that there is no no data at all so I disrupt all the data so when you open the map okay it will create a java connect field okay java connect field to connect to the server so there will be no more data okay there will be no more data displayed on the map so this is the drawback for this application because it rely to the third party server or to the remote server. But if you remember what we have already learned that all mobile applications should be connected and should be social. So these are one of the elements that you need to remember that each time when your user are using your mobile application, your mobile application should be connected somewhere. So everybody must have access to the data. So 
you can be ensure that most of the applic uh, of your uh, user would be connected to the the some uh, form of data connectivity somehow. So you can ensure that they can access your data anywhere and everywhere. And then by using this method, your user would have much more uh, richer user experience because they know that the application that they get from your uh, the information that they get from your uh, application are far more richer and then are much more current and much more latest. Okay, you can they can get latest information from the internet and then from the remote server. So um, that's all for today's uh, video. To ensure that you understand uh, the main point of this tutorial, because you will need to use it for your own uh, final year project and also as the group project for the subject. And then hopefully you can carry on doing this project after you have graduated from this program. So be seeing you on the next lesson.